Hi guys and welcome to this video. So what we're going to be doing today is I've gone out and bought the Orc Weird Knob Shaman but I'm going to be using him as a weird boy for my 40k Orcs. So here he is on the spring. Not many parts to him and his base. So we get him built and we're going to get him painted. Gonna try to aim and get the smoke effect. Don't know how well I'm gonna be able to uh, recreate that, but I'll give it a go. And then we'll keep my general orc skin tones and I've got a, like a gray shade when I've tested for the robes. But yeah, we'll get him built now. I'm gonna build him in sub assembly so he'll be easier to paint and I'll show him once he's built. Catch you in a moment, guys. Right, he's all built. Two subsections I've got him in. One, two, bit of blue tack for his base just so I can take him off and get to the underside of his uh, robes and then this part. It, it does, it's a little bit fiddly to get it on afterwards but it will go on, there we go. So that's him, Oops, come off the face. that's him as a whole. He's going to be good to paint. And I can get to everything, all body parts. The stick wasn't too hard. So it was just easy enough. Two subsections, spray them up, and we'll get those painted. Here he is, all sprayed and ready for some paint. Right, so first colour we're going to be using is the Iron Rack Skin, and as usual, this is the base colour, what I use for my skin tones. So don't worry about being too messy with this first step as it's, we're going to be putting other colours on there as well. So just get it on there, thin down your paints. Now I use three layers to get a nice solid base colour for this one. I need to set it up nicely for when we put the next uh, layer on. So there's the iron wax skin done and that's three thinned layers of paint. It's a nice smooth coat ready for when we now put the Ogun camo on. Now this one go on nice and smoothly because we've got a nice base colour to put it over. Now the thin coats are do take longer, but because they're thinner they dry quicker as well. So you can get each layer on quicker. Again, just thinning the paint down just so you keep the nice, the nice smoothness of the um, previous coat in there as well. We don't want to be taking our time with the previous coat and then globbing it up with a thick layer of the, the layer paint. Right, and there we have it. Nice basis for our skin tone done. Look at the smoothness on that. Because thinning down your paint does make a lot of difference to the overall look when it comes to texture and because thick paint is just going to clog the detail and it's going to look as good. So now as you can see there I just took my thin layer brush and we're going to take some rust grey and we're going to get the first coat onto all the cloth areas. Now you can use any colour you want but I use rust grey so any, you can use anything really, it's up to you. Again, it will take a few coats because this is a layer paint going over a base paint. Um, just take your time, build up the layers, let each layer dry, put another thin layer on top and you'll get a nice opaque colour at the end. So there it is, that's the, the rust grey finished. Nice smooth coat on there as well. It's got a little bit of a shine to it as well just because of how smooth the layers have gone down. Inside there as well, I did paint the fang just so it darkened up the inner inner cloth, just so it was a bit of a different shade to the uh, highlighted bit on top. Now we'll take any red. I use my fist in red, and I'm just going to paint all the little armor panels, plates, trims around the model. There's not many on this model because he's mainly just cloth and skin, but there's a few just around his. Um, 
waist and there's a few hanging off the um, cloth that hangs over his head as well. Okay, so he's going to a stage now where we're getting some colours blocked in, ready for when we put washes and then we'll start highlighting in the next steps. So now what we'll do is we'll take any brown, I just use Rhinox hide, and we're just going to paint that little area between on his stick, on his staff there, just between the skull and the little half brown thing on the end. Okay, so that's done. Can't see it too well because it's a bit, uh, bit dark, but just a couple of thin layers will bring that to the colour what you need it to. Now I'm going to be trying contrast paints on this model for the first time. It's the first time I'm going to be using contrast paints on a model. So I'm going to take the Wraith Bell, which is the base colour that comes um, with it to give it the contrast what it needs to be. And I'm going to paint that all over the bone areas and we'll see what this turns out like. So you get a nice couple of thin layers of paint now, ready for when we put that uh, contrast paint over in a second. So we're going to take Lead Belcher now and we're going to paint all the little wires that hold all the metal panelling up. And then in a second as well, we're going to take a dry brush and we're just going to lightly hit all the armor panels around his waist on that skull there and on the cloth areas just to give a bit of a, a metal, metallic shine to that uh, armor paneling. So I went ahead as well and did a little decorative base for him. It's just some hydrocoal mixed up, what you use for the rock moulds and things. Flattened out, cracked up to make a little rock. And then I'll just carve the edges with a standing knife or an X-Acto blade, just to break it up so it looked like rock. So at this stage I thought it'd be best to get him stuck down to his base so that my oily fingers weren't ripping off the layers of paint that I already put on there. So I put an Agrax uh, shade wash underneath the cloth area there, just so I didn't have to get back to it later which will help then, I can put him on the base and I'll be able to hold him for when I need to do the other layers in a, in a moment. Then we're going to take a Thonian camo shade, which is the wash what I use for the skin. I'm going to uh, take that over the skin. <laughs> so what I did as well is I watered it down just a little bit, just so it ran into the recesses better, so there wasn't so much sticking on all the highest parts. So you can control washes quite well when they come straight out of the pot, but I watered it down a little bit just so it flows straight into the recesses and gives that nice uh, definition. So there we have it now, that's pretty much the skin done. If you do want to take the um, album camo back over it, um, to if there's any tied marks or anything like that, I use just album camo, mix that with the thonian camo shades in a one-to-one, -one, just so you can get that the break between the two so it's not so stark. Take that over, a nice thin coat and just what, get rid of those tie marks. As you can see me doing here, just taking a nice thin layer, just getting rid of those tie marks so it, it just looks just that bit more crisp. Then we're going to take a staggered on scale green and we're just going to paint all any wraps on the model. The main room where the skull parts are on the bone, there's a couple there around the horn and then on his head in the background there where you can see where the two tusks come down, there's a couple of straps around his head there as well. Then we'll take a lighter brown, I'm just going to use Gawthor brown and we're just going to highlight that bit of wood area that we painted earlier, which, which I painted Rhinox hide. We're going to take it thin down and we're just going to just hit the highest parts of that area. Now we're going to take the Agrax third shade again, and this time we're going to paint all the cloth areas over with this wash and the little brown staff part as well, just to blend if, if you 
if you've got any weird looking highlights. I normally do the highlight and then put a wash over just just so it looks a bit better because I'm not the best at highlights at the moment but it really ties them in afterwards. Now what I did here is I did water the Agrax Earthshade down one to one with water but then I decided afterwards it didn't look that great it pulled far too much at the bottom so I just put a straight Agrax Earthshade straight out of the pot wash over that cloth area just so then I'd, it's got more darker recesses when you ready for when I put the next couple of layers on. So there you can see that darker cloth now. That's with that straight out the pot Agrax Earthshade all over it. Just so it, it gives me darker shadows when it comes to the cloth because the first layer when it, it was watered down it didn't look right. So as you can see there you can still see some of the tide marks from the previous layer look right at the bottom there by that skull on the right. It just didn't look right. So now for the clean up, we're going to take Rus, Rus, Rus Grey, sorry, and we're going to mix that one to one with the Agrax Earth Shade, like we, like we did with the skin tone and like we did with the other areas on the model. Just mixing that wash with the layer colour and just putting that back over the top, just to start bringing some of the uh, definition back into the cloth. To take your time with this step, try to leave those um, darkest uh, recesses dark and just focus on the highest points of the cloth and just work your way just up to that point where the dark shadows are, leaving a nice dark line in the cloth. So this is something while I've been trying to improve in my painting, um, using layer paints because I've always been one for just whacking a base coat on, dry brushing it, putting a wash on, easy quick steps but I'm trying to, trying to enhance how I paint, so I'm trying to incorporate layers, highlights, edge highlighting, it's getting there, Le leave a comment in the, just how you think it looks, any comments are at the that if I, I can improve in any way, just let me know. So now here I am trying my hand at some edge highlighting. I haven't really done this on any of my models before. I've tested it, I've tried it, didn't really like it, so I just went back to dry brushing. But I'm using Fenrisian Grey, thin down. I'm just going to run that along all the highest points of the cloth. And to be fair, I did like it. I just took my time, nice thin detail brush. Can't remember what size I used, but it was a, I think it's a zero or a, no, four zero brush. Um, and then I just took a thin layer and just put it along, dragged it, side of the brush along all the uh, highest points of the cloth. Right, so here we have it. We're going to test these uh, contrast paints, all the hype's been about uh, recently. So I've bought Skeleton Hood. I have bought a few other ones, but I'll probably be trying in some other later videos. But we're just going to take this and we're just going to... I'm just going to put it on like I would do a wash and just see how that turns out. Put it on and just let that to dry. Now it did dry okay. It was a bit too dark in some places, so what I did is I just took Screaming Skull, I didn't record this bit, I did it quickly and then forgot to record it, but I took Screaming Skull and I just dry brushed it lightly over the main skull on his staff, just to bring out some of the brightness of the bone again. 
And yep, this is him all now together. So I'll glue his head on and he's all on his little rock. So now what we're going to do is we're going to attempt this uh, smoke effect on top of the staff there. So I took some Mephisto and Red first and I just put a base coat down of that. And then I then went back in with another watered down layer of Wild Rider Red after that. And that brought it to the colour what I wanted to start the smoke off at. So I could then put the blend in towards that darker blue purple colour at the top. So my original thought was I'll take Gullum and Blue as a glaze and just build up layer after layer after layer after layer until I get to that dark blue at the edge. I scrapped that idea completely because it just took too long and then what I did instead is I tried my hand at wet blending and started with both colours on my palette. The you know, I went for Cantor Blue as my darkest blue at the edge and obviously the Wild Rider Red. Put two dollops of that on my palette, did a one-to-one -one mix, and I put that right where in the middle where I wanted the actual transition to actually cross over. So the middle point of that smoke, I put the mixed one-to-one -one ratio. And then what I did is either side, obviously towards the red, I did then a one mix of Cantor Blue to two Wild Rider Red, then one to three, one to four and then I think that was the, the last point I did and then the other way again I did one to two, one to three, one to four and I just blended it that way and that gave me a better result more to what I wanted and then what I did afterwards just to tie those colours in a little bit more is I took Slanesh grey but you can use any light grey what you've got to hand and I just dry brushed that lightly all over the smoke area just to blend those colours a little bit more. The transition was okay, I was happy with the transition between the two colours. I just wanted to pick out some highlights on that smoke itself. Then I didn't record this but off camera I just took Drucci Violet which is the purple wash and just done a wash all over that so it just toned down those highlights just that little bit and blended it just that little bit further. You don't have to go this far but with the way it turned out in the end, I, I really did like the way the final result came out. So here he is, all complete. I do like the way he turned out. I love this for my first attempt on it. I think I've Done okay. Doesn't look anywhere near what it does on the art on the on the box itself, but I'm happy with it. I like the way the bone turned out on these bits, a bit darker areas on the scores, just to give some different uh, tones to the bone. Love the way the skin turned out. I feel as though this part of the cloth I did better than this part of the cloth but well, it's just a shame that this part is the one you're going to see more I can work on that when I come to do the next one bit of snow around the base just a bit of PVA glue with my snow flock and we uh, just stippled that on I put a bit of a layer of PVA glue first just so it was easier for the snow mix to then stick to it black rim around the base Put a wash over his teeth, painted the eyes red. But yeah, overall, happy, really happy with this model. Loved painting it. Really good model to paint. A lot of detail, definition, different textures and things. Could have done better. Could have done better. Put a, a varnish on him now. So I'm going to leave him at that. Happy with him and he'll fit nicely as the weird boy in my orc army. I already have a weird boy anyway, which I made out of a snick years ago. 
especially because I did like the model as his snip quite I put a staff on him and cut a few of his knives off and things like that but happy with this model now to either act as the second weird boy or act as the, just the main weird boy and I'll just get rid of the other one but yeah let me know what you think like and comment any comments uh, of where I could have done this better um, but yeah thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you next time